we, we can do this again with some nice um, money from you guys. So thanks a lot for tuning in, thanks for the comments, etc. And we'll be jumping into the uh, third best of three for today. And boy oh boy am I looking forward to this. TH being um, arguably the best Warcraft 3 player currently in the world is facing off Yumiko here on Last Refuge and he's playing Undead and it was not just random. He picked Undead. I saw it in the loading screen. He picked Undead against Yumiko's Knight of normally TH always in this matchup against Human chose to go for the Knight of race this time around however undead yeah it's really interesting to see um how this will be turning out for TH I've, I've actually never seen him play undead I think I know he's quite a good random player but usually in um in the um, yeah more important games, he's picking either human or night elf, uh, depending on the matchup. Um, it will be interesting to see the strategies he goes for th for the micro. If he's really if he really knows um, undead really inside from the inside out, um, and I think it will be hard to overcome Yumiko, is as he's a really uh, nice human player as well. Yes, absolutely. And because it's TH, I think we're going to see some uh, unconventional and creative strategies. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, are you in the game? Yeah, just give me a second updating the last things. Alrighty. There you go. Um. Why can't uh, you see the game? Uh, someone's asking in, in chat. It's uh, we haven't started yet. <laughs> We're yeah. still uh, preparing things, but in a second, you should be able to see what's going on. I uh, know. Uh, I see you typing stuff. Yeah. Ah, there it is. All right. Yep. Yep. Last refuge. The last best of three. We're gonna see tonight. Th against Yumiko. Yeah, I think the we two are all ready to go. Two Chinese legends. All right, let's start this game then in three, two, one, sync. Yeah, it's really interesting a to see Yumiko and um, TH in the lower bracket. As you said, TH arguably one of the best um, Warcraft three players we have at uh, at the time, and he's he was knocked off to the lower bracket as well as Yumiko, who faced off um, his human counterpart Reprisal from Korea and lost 2-1, two to one. it's really um, yeah, interesting to see those two faces in the lower bracket. Especially TH, he was the best favorite for this entire tournament. Yep. And he was kicked uh, down to the lower bracket fairly early actually. And now he's fighting for his tournament life right now against Yumiko on Last yep. Refuge. And with so much at stake, he's actually gonna be going for the undead race and we have a death knight first so this is very standard but it was a late altar yeah. in, uh, in exchange he got the early crypt and early graveyard so probably very early fiends yeah what is not standard uh, or not so standard is the mountain king on the other hand Yumiko saw the undead race on uh, his opponents um, yeah uh, pick and then he decided he wanted to go for the mk with the bolt with the damage he can deal to the uh, death knight and to the fiends and then maybe even later at the paladin second which is uh, quite normal and maybe even at a blood match third with bennett and this is mo uh, most likely the worst uh, tri hero combo you can face off as an unit right uh, i'd say probably even in the game Especially when a very skilled player uh, plays it. And I think this very offensive narrow tower is there to uh, creep this goblin a player's force laboratory. And he does it. I didn't think he was going to do it right now. I thought he was going to wait. But with this tower he can, he can actually creep it so early. So this is the first uh, creative thing we're seeing from TH in this game. Needs to be careful not to last hit the creeps with the tower because then the experience will be denied. Gets the experience of the first guy and will also get the Ogre Magi quite soon. Uses uh, ghouls to creep Player with, uh, so this does cost him quite a bit of lumber, so his tech is, deli is delayed quite a bit. 
but he gets a very nice item, a health stone, especially against the Mountain King with a heavy focus, hero focus, that's very, very good. There's the second fiend coming. On the other side, um, Yumiko is already level 2 and now creeping, his, um, creeping the expansion and we have three militia, maybe even a fourth one, no, that's a footman. So we might see a fast expansion here, no tech yet and a lot of peasants, so this is most likely going to be a expansion from the human and this is uh, actually not that bad as uh, as the unit is not be able to pressure him early on. Early on. No, not at all. And I, I don't know, TH I think he's gonna expand at some point because he's not tacking, which means he basically has no way to cancel the expansion neither does he have a good way to inflict critical damage He's now creeping the goblin uh, merchant, but I think he wants to expand. Footman is scouting this, should see the item, should see the sacrificial skull. So sometimes you see a sacrificial skull being used just for creeping, mm -hmm. but normally of course it's for an expansion. I'm surprised he creeps this while going for the expo, but alright, and now he's tacking. Okay, I am utterly confused right now. Oh, here comes the Mountain King Bolt. But the Death Knight is far away, he does not get surrounded, but another bolt is soon to follow. What's he gonna go on? Uh, the Fiends probably, and the first one is surely dead. Nice. Level 3 though, as he finished one of the footmen, which is uh, at least uh, the, uh, the slightest trait of that he can get, but uh, he lost one Fiend and took so much damage with, the, with his Death Knight, and I don't think this is something you want to trade in. And yeah. now the expansion is almost done at Yumiko, Yumiko's side, building it with four peasants, and it's going straight to the gold mine. And I'm still looking at TH. Is he gonna expand or not? Well, actually, it's, it's I sincerely doubt it because he has no sixth acolyte, which you nope. normally want, otherwise, you're losing too much gold. And now he's gonna start harassing. Alright, he, he ran around Yumiko, he didn't expect it. And there is the Sacrificial Skull, okay, so I've scratched everything I was gonna say. He bought it so that he can apply more pressure, but this is so difficult with the Mountain King coming in with a Storm Bolt. He only has three fiends, and once these fiends are dead, his army is a lot weaker. Maybe even bolts around on the Death Knight and force the TP right away. Is he gonna do it? No, nope. Miko for the fiend doesn't even need the bolt to surround the first one next to the trees oh man we'll lose it well not immediately it takes quite some time actually and the scroll of the beast whoa this bolsters his army strength significantly actually and now he loses the fiend he has two no three more coils available to himself loses one ghoul though yes does just barely die and there's a bolt and there's a focus and that's why mountain king is so good against fiends surrounds another ghoul very well done by yumiko Little nimble ghouls are not that easy to surround. He's not even trying to go for the DK. Other bolts around, he can get the last remaining fiends. Uh, wants to go for the ghoul rather though, and this is wha what I was saying. I don't, I didn't feel he had a chance to kill this expansion or deal significant damage. And well, it seems I was right. Yeah. Now level 4 on the Mountain King, this is really looking dire for the undead player for TH. As someone in the chat was pointing out, uh, TH did the exact same strategy oh, in his first game, uh, first yeah. match against Hawk. He won that map, but this is uh, really look not looking good for him. Maybe finishing off a last footman, does he have a coil in spare? Yes he does, but he, um, he cancels his push, he cancels the aggression and now the Mountain King is finding another fiend, but he's running off. He's afraid of two fiends in a death knight, I'm not sure why exactly. No tech yet, uh, still for Yumiko. Finally now the shop for Yumiko, the arcane vault. Pretty late actually, he needs the clarities. And yep. also the scroll of regeneration. Well, Players needing is uh, an overstatement because there's only three fiends. There's no urgent need for anything because these fiends can't deal much damage at all yep. to Yumiko. So it's actually relaxed right now for the human player. Well, now we have a lich, most likely with frost armor first. So that poses a bit of a problem. But now we have clarities, now we will have more bolts. 
to play with an already level 4 Mountain King with the Boots of Speed. He also has quite a, a potent bash, not only the bolt. There is the first bolt. He should do the anti-surround. And there's the frost armor. Yes, very much so standard. And now, killing off these Crypt Fiends just got a lot more difficult, but he does the surround again. Nice surrounds by Yumiko all the time. Does he have Borrow? Is he upgrading it? No. Oh, that's so ni such a nice micro by Yumiko. He's uh, having the surround on the Fiend. Meanwhile, going for the uh, for the rest of the Undead Army, trying another surround. This is really, really nicely done. He even has mana for a second um, bolt in a few seconds. It's really looking good. And there's another surround. And there is a... Um, coil and he delays the death of the fiend but that's it but maybe yeah he does get, uh, pressure the portal by the mountain king so oh. at least that's that but and there was one more goal to save the fiend but it dies under. with the death coil in the air and that's always painful <laughs> miserable when death. you're the undead and but he's now taking at the expansion unico so that he can call militia from there which might not be the uh, the worst decision after all TH on the other hand, he's actually creeping the Goblin Merchant now, he's level 4 as well on his um, Death Knight, plus he has a um, tier 2 hero which is the Lich almost level 2, but he seems not to be able to f finish the creep camp, I'm not sure yeah. why. Why is that? I think he wants to apply to right now with this meat wagon he just got. But it's just, he has two fiends, one meat wagon and a shredder, which I find uh, to be a nice choice, by the way, because it cannot be uh, stunned with a bolt, as it's mechanical. Mm -hmm. But I think he's going to return it back home now, because he has no more ghouls to lumber, uh, to harvest any lumber. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a long time before this meat wagon kills this expansion. At another least he's focused on shop, but it's yeah. uh, yeah. are gets cancelled. But he has another one. There's four towers in the back. Fifty supply the nice thing footmen, is by the way. Fifty supply footmen, really. Uh, that's quite a few. And of course, also a lot of peasants. Oh my God, that's like at least twenty peasants at the natural, and ten to add in the main. So that's a lot of economy for Yumiko, and he's doing t exactly the right move. There's no way the Undead can seriously pressure his expansion, so he's going for economic damage onto his opponent. And he kills one more fiend. Yep, it dies. Invulnerability used also on the Mountain King. Loses one footman, but hey, what's one footman? Oh, the Death Knight! But he's very tanky here. He is standing on the Blight, and yeah, he will not be killed. Mountain King forced to TP out again. Bought himself some time. And now, the Meat Wagon. Oh, look at this. He has two Zeppelins, so the meat wagons are basically invulnerable. Very nice. Yep. Nicely done by TH. And this uh, this is why we love to see him, because he's really using different strategies, different strategic decisions that he's making during the game, which makes it nice to watch. And uh, we have we have the meat wagons, we have the tier 2 pressure. We rarely see that by Unnets. We often see tier 3 with destroyers, but he's skipping that entirely and going for fiends and, and meat wagons. That's something we oftentimes saw from uh, Ted, like, I don't know, three years or something ago. He started doing this, staying on tier 2, uh, adding meat wagons, attack. going into upkeep and trying to destroy the expansion at tier 2. Yeah, Sometimes even getting damage up for the meat wagons at the same time. But he's still in no upkeep, TH is, adding his third meat wagon, only now getting borrow. Seems kind of late. Oh, no, but no, now here comes the fight with a lot of mercenaries. Yeah, the and Mountain King, who's he gonna throw the bolt on onto the first fiend? And here comes the middle support from the natural. But the scroll of the beast, it's strong, man. Some units get killed, and oh, the Zeppelin, very nice. Can be used very effectively against both surrounds, like on the Death Knight right here. He should load him into it. Yes, very well done. And because there's no Archmage with no war elementals, this Zeppelin is very hard to kill. But the Mountain King is already level 5. Jesus Christ, this fiend, well, it gets coiled, but I don't think it's gonna save her. Or is it the... Oh, the Zeppelin, very well done. Does get shot down, however, and the Lich dies in the meantime. Level 2 Lich dies really quickly against level 5 Mountain King, which will have another bolt soon. Bashes one Meat Wagon to death. And, well, one more bolt will surely be the demise of this fiend. Doesn't try to go for it, though, because... 
Believe it or not, he actually lost quite a bit, but here's the Blood Mage with two mana potions. That's so many bolts. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. And I think he needs those bolts to, f um, to defend off the pressure on his expansion again and again. Um, meanwhile, TH is deciding to creep his decay on level 5, which is an important level as well. Level 3 coil does so much healing, uh, does have so much healing power, so much damage against the human player. It's it's really, really nice. Um, now focusing on the Null Overseer, which item will we get here? Which is a uh, Rune Bracer? Is that correct? Or was it Class of Attack? No. Class plus 6. He got the Rune at the, uh, oh, at the beginning, beginning right? I think. At the beginning, right. Or where did he get it? Must have been at the Goblin Merchant, yeah. Yep. And now he's going for the red spot actually, with only four fiends and a death knight. It takes quite a while actually to kill this thing off. Yeah, but he does have By two the way, stages. he decided to decide to take to tier three. Yep. So he's not all inning anymore on trying to kill the expansion. I think he realizes alright. This opportunity has come and gone. Oh, uh, uh, Yumiko uh, oh ensnared man. the goblins, or rather the creeps ensnared the goblin zeppelin, and now Yumiko is able to finish off two meat wagons. This is really huge. This is so bad luck for TH. It's so nice for Yumiko. He's really laughing his ass off, to, <laughs> to be exact. Uh, on the other hand, TH finished off the creep, and what he got was a Legion Doom Horm, and this is actually... This is the worst yeah. item that you can get. Yeah, There's that's no that's worst 200 item. <laughs> that's 250 gold right there. Um, I, as you say, losing those uh, catapults, meatwangs, that's a lot of experience for Yumiko and a lot of money lost for the undead. But I think strategically, it's not even that big of a deal because I think there was not really a way he was going to break the base with those meatwangs. Yeah, true. So I think losing them well. However, he does have three statues Upgrade and the destroyer upgrade coming in soon so maybe he planned to attack the base once more with destroyers and meatwings I don't know could be the case but if he didn't uh, plan to do it it was not that big of a deal but uh, we don't know yet oh. yeah. we, we will two not now. find out I guess he's uh, going for the goblin laboratory creeping the biggest camp that or the bigger camp that TH already did in the beginning of the game do what item do we see at least at level two? Will we see um, uh, Siphon Mana, right? Or will it be Flame Strike against? Uh, undead? No, 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 no. It's, it's always Siphon Mana yeah. and uh, Banish against yeah. Undead. Even Banish the Troll High Priest um, to prevent him from from healing the ogre. Finishing off the creep set a little bit faster. Now the MK comes as well. There you go, Siphon Mana. Oh, look at. Look at that, there's... And Yumiko uh, does actually want to go on the offensive, so yeah. you're right, losing those uh, meat wagons was really, really painful for him, because he did want to deal damage, and as we see, Destroyer is always the strongest when they first come out, focus onto the Blood Mage right away, but he has a healing potion, and so much militia coming in, Jesus Christ! I don't think there's any way that oh, TH can win this fight, he just needs to be careful on the Death Knight, he uses the Health Stone, but he has no more mana to coil, he needs to TP out right away. The Lich, the Lich, will he get bolted? Will he get bolted? Banish? Bolt? No. No bolt. Yeah, it was all on cooldown. I think um, he bolted the DK in the, uh, two seconds earlier or three seconds earlier. But we have two Griffin Aviaries for um, for Yumiko. This is really huge as soon as he adds more, uh, more Griffins. For now, he only has Dragonhawk Riders and um, produces two more of those. But I think... Oh, it's he's not tier 3 yet, so this is why. But I think as soon as we have tier 3, there will be griffins, and griffins deal so much damage um, with their uh, magic damage. This is really but big. he's already he's already getting the counter. He's getting Temple of the Damned with Adept Banshees for anti-magic shell. Nice. Something we rarely see from normal undeads, but TH, yeah. he found the, uh, the secret strategy book. And he's gonna deploy it uh, with some Banshees. Banshees and Fiends with web. Should be the answer to m massive air. And now he's getting another red creep spot. Yeah, this is actually ah. a nice decision by TH. He got both the red uh, red spots and uh, get the XP, get the items. And this is this is really nice backup plan for him um, to, to actually... Oh, okay, <laughs> never mind. Another Legion Doomhorn. Never mind Bad. me. Well, that's bad luck. Of course, Katka's Pie of Insight is uh, pretty much the, the dream item you can get right there. 
By the way, a little sloppy from TH, not closing off his haunted gold mine with cigarettes. Normally that's pretty standard, so the Mountain King can't walk in there. And perhaps even have a, what do you call it, a Zeppelin hovering off, so you can load him into it. Mm -hmm. He might, he but might yeah, the shredder. Yeah, he might be even a I able like to kill the shredder. This is yeah. not so much he damage that he's thinking. Well, now he's starting out. Well, his his hero levels are quite potent. Level five DK, level four Lich, with quite a bit of damage on yeah. his hands. And there is the acolyte for the expansion. Yeah. Finally. By the way, look at the items of the Lich. It's. Uh, that's looking actually pretty good. 850 um, HP plus the damage plus the uh, gloss of face. This is really looking good. And he actually wants to creep him on level 5. And this is uh, quite significant against the level 5 and 3 on the human side. Um, plus another nice item yes. on the other hand. Oh, look at those Griffin Riders harassing the Echoes. There are so many Griffin Riders. They may, might even be able to take down one of the towers, but he doesn't want to. Did you see? Yeah, he's uh, upgrading the cloud. <laughs> And <laughs> I didn't see that in competitive gaming for years, and I'm not under uh, under uh, not what exaggerating. This is the word I was looking <laughs> for. <laughs> yeah, I I've seen it quite a few times actually. When you see a tier three human with possibly even two expansions, there's a lot of this uh, flying harassment with cloud going on. Well, I of course uh, see it more often as I uh, well I play undead. <laughs> But, yeah, th those banshees, they are actually intended for griffins, which he has none of so far. He did upgrade the, uh, what's it called? Storm, Storm Hammer. Hammer's upgrade. But none have been added to the army yet. The Lich is on a good way to uh, level 5, though. And there goes the, banshee. the Banish and Bolt instantly kills the Banshee. And, and by the way, also roll. instantly kills the Fiend. We have a third hero. Paladin is on the map, is level one uh, only right now, so he's re really vulnerable to the um, to the death coil and the frost nova from the undead. But uh, as soon as he hits level two, he will be a really potent addition to the two other heroes of the human player. And he needs to defend this base. H does. Uh, loses one fiend right there. I was a little bit late, but I, as but I assume it was a uh, banished bolt. And there's a Dark Ranger, the usual third hero for the Undead in this matchup. Very good against Paladin to prevent Divine Shield and uh, the uh, Holy Light. But it's also so squishy, man. Only 550 hit points. That's really, really little. Oh, nice scouting by the Destroyer. Look at this. Very, very good awareness by TH. Um, sensing that there might be something coming. Oh, nice! He, do he dodged the kill onto the Fiend with an anti-magic shell just at the last second, but that's so many Dragonhawk Riders. He's trying to kite them with the web. Is it gonna be enough? We see anti-magic shell on basically everything, but that's so many Dragonhawks, man. How can he compete with this sheer mass? I don't know, but with hit and run and webbing and stuff, he might be getting a few, and he loses one destroyer. He forgot about it, that it was the scouting destroyer. Gets one destroyer for one Dragonhawk. That's not great you wanna take, buddy. And Banished Bolt instantly kills another fiend. He needs more anti-magic shells. He has no more mana though. And these dragon hawks, they seem to just have free reign. Maybe TH needs to go for a for a hero kill or something. He has one more Nova left, but only one, and that's it. Unless of course he eats something with a sacrificial pact. And it gets more destroyers now. And the web. The web is helping. I don't know if the it's destroyers are the right decision though. The bolts are coming uh, one after another and there's even the blood mage. You see that? He's not even taken any, any any damage from the Coil and the Nova. And uh, TH really has to be careful to not lose the game at this very moment. Focusing on another Dragonhawk Rider which is uh, webbed to the, to the ground. And this is the hit and run you were talking about. And this is what's um, keeping him in, in the game. Maybe t actually getting a second Dragonhawk Rider. No, he doesn't want to finish that. I don't think he actually sees it anymore. Um, Lich almost level 5. This is a nice level as well. But... He's so far, um, so far behind in terms of uh, supply that it will be difficult even to find a, a backup, um, t uh, even if you have Lich level five. <coughs> but very soon, for the first time, long time, it's going to be one base versus one base, 
And that is right now, well actually Yumiko right now has no base, no mm. income to speak of. But he has four towers right here with two masonry upgrades and a good army to defend this. TH has fought valiantly. Oh, that's a lot of militia. That's also potentially a lot of XP and level 5 for the Lich. Yes, it is. But he has not enough mana for Anova right now. Well, he does now. Just barely, I guess he's uh, sacrificial pacted something. Oh, but the Griffins and the... Wow, that Nova hurts so much in the militia. Needs to be careful right now. The Lich is very, very much so out of position and he has no invulnerability. He gets both and he gets attacked. He gets holy light at the coil. The coil at the last second. Man, are you kidding me? He uses Frost Armor, heals up. Well, full mana on the Mountain King. The Bolt will be coming shortly. No, he was slowed because he attacked the Frost Armor. <laughs> he was too slow to follow up on the Lich. Oh, man. That was nail-bitingly close. And Look TH, he has his expansion up. Yeah, he's actually back in the game. 57 supply on the human side against 64 on <coughs> TH side. This is really looking good again for the Annette. His, um, his uh, hot and gold mine is running for uh, quite some time now. Even b uh, oh, building a sacrificial pit to scout some more. Now he tries to level up his Dark Ranger. Uh, his yeah, Dark Ranger, sorry. I was about to call it the Row Ranger. But this is another game. Um, with the higher levels in Silent, this will be one of the most important skills in the game coming up. Silence is oftentimes uh, underrated. It's so strong. Level 2 lasts for, I think, 7 seconds, and that is massive. But he needs to stop using the freaking uh, Arrow of well Darkness, or otherwise he's gonna have no mana. Uh. But uh, there's also an easy way to honor uh, Silence, and that's Potion of Invulnerability. Or, of course, you can staff out the other heroes. We have only one staff for Yumiko. I think that's quite a big mistake. He would have been able to save a lot more of those dragon hawks. Oh, nice. The uh, anti magic shell once again saves the fiend. He would have been able to save a lot more of those dragon hawks had he had more staffs. But he didn't want to get any. And now the Unit Army is becoming kind of scary actually. Lots of banshees, lots of destroyers, a few fiends here and there for webs. And of course the heroes are strong, especially with the anti-magic shell. Mm -hmm. And the lich, more than 900 hit points, not easy to kill. The Dark Ranger, however, needs to be really careful. Yeah. Um, we see Yumiko building a workshop and you see something that you always regret as a caster. Tanks. And not only one it workshop, it's two workshops, right. and this will be becoming a really long game, guys. And <laughs> don't think that we are enjoying it. So far the game has been really nice, but with tanks coming up, this is always so, so bad. You always know that there's <laughs> base laming involved, and I don't want to see that. Yeah, uh, it's, it's most of the time frustrating to see as a player and as a uh, commentator or viewer. And now, nice uh, multitasking by Yumiko attack. using only four of his uh, air army units to harass the opponent expansion. Kills two acolytes, and because the Black Citadel is so far away, it's going to take a long time for this uh, gold mine to be uh, fully operational again. But there's another haunted gold mine on the way, but the Dragonhawk scouted and should be able to make quick work of them. And this is something nice about destroyers. When there's not really many um, dragon hawks or attack. flying machines out, there's actually not that much you can do about it. I mean, the heroes can shoot at him, but it's gonna take forever to die. Oh, TH so must be careful with his uh, destroyers. Now he's microing back the first one, but he's just attacking the the blood match. I'm not sure what's his reasoning behind this. It's getting healed uh, time and time again, and now there are the dragon hawks coming in, and they are dishing out so much more damage against the uh, the light armor type of the destroyers. Now TH finally realizes what's going on, and he's actually flying right through the towers. I don't, I'm not sure what what's what's going on with him right there. Oh, I know what's going on. It's two tanks against the haunted gold mine. I think that with with the destroyers, I think it was intentional. He knew that he shouldn't lose any destroyers right there. So he just did some damage that was basically free. But I think he lost one destroyer somewhere because he had four, now he has yeah. three. Ah oh no, ah oh no, it's uh, back here at the gold mine that was just destroyed. Okay. The two tanks die, did uh, kill the gold mine however. They give uh, the Dark Ranger level three. 
which increases the duration and even more importantly the radius of the silence so you can possibly even hit three heroes which is obviously very very good the uh, thing is about uh, tanks it's only really good when you can have three workshops and building them and building them and building them and building them but for that you need two expansions and Yumi only has one yep. so it's not the tank death push overroll everything that you can do right here it's just it seems to me honestly a little well it seems like he doesn't have too much of a plan going on he's like all right gonna build some tanks and hopefully I can, can I can kill something and then uh, well and then I'll see <laughs> yep. you know it doesn't seem like he has much of a backup plan like it's not like I'm gonna send my tanks here all right and my army is gonna be here gonna be doing that my heroes are gonna be here gonna be doing that he's just sending tanks across and he's sitting with his heroes and army at his base at his second expansion it's so because yeah, there's no, no no more creep camps um, to go for there's no more items that he can catch um, and a fight against the, an open fight against the undead army will be really terrible for him. So I think this is the exact reason why he's sending out the tanks. So just so he can um, deal some damage to the buildings and see how the undead Blade reacts. I think this is actually he wants to react to the undead movements. Tank drop, tank drop, the zeppelin coming in in a second here. Oh, there it is. But I don't think it's gonna be enough. Needs to start repairing immediately. Obviously, he's a little late on that. Now he starts doing it. It was a good three seconds, he didn't do it, but it should be enough. There we see the double silence on Blood Mage and Mountain King. At six seconds they can't do anything. Coil Nova onto the Mountain King, where's the Blood Ma uh, the Paladin he needs to heal? Where's the Paladin? Paladin is still at the Town Hall doing nothing. Avatar is being used, alright, that makes him very tanky of course. And yeah, he can staff out the Blood Mage and can teleport himself away, so yeah, he doesn't lose anything. So I guess leaving the Paladin behind was intentional. But yeah, he didn't get much done there. Killed two acolytes and lost three tanks, I believe. Yeah, and the the worst thing, he didn't get the haunted gold mine. This is really important to um, somehow cancel the economic input for TH. Is he trying to get uh, the second haunted god line? No, not so far. But he does have a huge army, 75 supply against the 60 supply on the human side. This is. This is really not looking good for the human. It's kind of a stalemate right now since no one wants to fight, but the undead player is having all the drums in his hand. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's tough for TH to get another expansion going. And until that moment comes, I don't see... Hmm. Let's think here. TH, when he's up to 80 supply, he should be able, I think, to kill the expansion of Yumiko. His heroes are just a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. Is Yumiko at that point going to be strong enough to defend? Well, oh, look at this. Look at his first expansion. He's preparing the death rollout from the tanks. He's yep. gathering them up and probably once they're eight out, he's just going to A-click them in and going to send everything with them. I think what's so risky, man. Yeah, it is. What the TH could do is um, somehow put some pressure on the uh, actual main base of Yumiko, trying to finish off A some farms um, or the cancel the blacksmith, because it is having the upgrades for the tanks. But on the other hand, he ca uh, he is not able to go out too far as there is no necropolis at this expansion. So as soon as he walks out, he will be taking a lot of damage. And uh, I think maybe a necropolis um, at the second gold mine, the one that he wanted to um, haunt earlier, it might be a right decision and then get a TP scroll to, to put some pressure on the human player. Yeah, but I think the, the dangerous thing here is everything he sends out apart from destroyers can be easily killed. And he needs to have something back to defend. So, I think uh, sending his destroyers out is the right decision, but the thing is they don't deal that much damage. So, yeah. I don't know, maybe he should be splitting more, but I understand his hesitation. Because there's always tank drops coming, there's griffins, there's dragon hawks, there's heroes that are walking in this. So, splitting up your uh, force can definitely backfire. Well, there's not much going. While there's not much going on in the game, um, I want to mention something. This game is a replay cast, so 
um, I just saw that someone was trying to spoil the game. Please do not, because there might be actually some players, um, some viewers waiting for the games to finish and not watching the the scores and etc. So please do not come into the chat and just tell the tell the score of the games. This is really really rude towards the viewers, towards the casters. So please refrain um, from doing so. Yeah, guys, come on, don't be like that. There are people that are enjoying no, this uh, broadcast and they're looking forward to finding out who the winner is and you don't need to spoil that for them. And now another attempt at the explanation has been cancelled thanks to the two griffins and yeah that's really it's really tough for TH to secure this even though he pr most likely has the stronger army right now. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tanks, an eighth one and a ninth one the are on the way. After that, he can kill some peasants with his towers <coughs> and build uh, one or even two more tanks. And then it may be time to roll out. We'll see. Hmm. Big disadvantage for Yumiko is his paladin one still. So he has no divine shield. And even if he's level 2, it's quite a ways off until level 3 and level 2 holy light, which is so important when you're engaging into an actual fight. Maybe now TH can secure his uh, expansion. It seems like Miko, for a few seconds, for the first time, has uh, lost concentration and is not cancelling this. Well, two griffins attack. are flying down as I say that. Uh, there's, by the way, nine tanks in Yumiko's uh, at Yumiko's expansion, and now the war is coming up. They're rolling out, and it's the damage they want to, d to deal to the buildings and on the other hand on the other hand side there is the griffin riders that are trying to cancel the expansion i think they w might actually be able to Ooh, no they're running destroyers scouting it they're running through destroyers. the yeah but they're the, the griffins uh, they are yeah. being finished off they they were found by the fiends and they were um, webbed as soon as possible and the uh, the destroyers found the tanks there are two tanks split to the far right but on the other side, we have two, four, five, five tanks. There, where's the uh, where's the last one? There was, is there yeah. There's one or two missing. They are rolling through the map, and that's the finish of the first building. Now they finish off the second building, or at least in a in a bit. TH has no TP right now. He has no money for a TP, and this basically means cert death for his main base. He's sacrificing his Black Citadel and all the infrastructure next to it. He wants to save his expansions. Silence hits Blood Mage and Mountain King again and double staff out. But his second expansion, he needs to repair it. Is he repairing it with everything? No, now he is repairing it with, other th with everything. Needs to try and save this. This won't be enough. I think. Oh no, tanks, tanks are killing it. This expansion is dead. Oh man, so the mass tank tactic seems to be paying off, but it's not over yet. He still has one base. TH still has one base and he can rebuild his haunted gold mine over there. And it's one, two, three, four, five tanks, six, seven tanks left to deal with. But look at what uh, look at what one once was uh, TH's base. This yeah, so but there's, there's no more gold there. I mean, he can't rebuild anything because his supply stuck significantly. But he also, if he does it right with the Banshees, he shouldn't be losing much. All right, now he has three meat wagons. That's a lot of damage to kill off the siege tanks. Level six also right now for the Death Knight, of course, not all that useful. And he will lose his haunted gold mine. Question is, will he be able to kill off all the tanks? There is a TP on the Mountain King. He will probably kill the haunted gold mine and TP out. On the gold mine is dead, stabs the tank out, does not TP out, now he does. Will he get another tank? Yes, he gets another one. And sets up the gold mine right away. And in the meantime, three destroyers were dealing with a human in his main. And he'll get a tank, maybe. And there's again no staff. One staff could easily save this tank. Doesn't have it though. Oh, we have two casters. I didn't see that. A sorceress and a priest. I don't. I don't have any idea why he would put them in, the, in his army. The sorceress the has been added uh, earlier because of the invis. Oh, because he of casted the, the hero's invis and sent them across the map, and that one priest is just uh, there to heal, I guess. 
And TH keeps defending, has to keep on defending, loses another ziggurat. Has no income right now. He has almost enough for another haunted gold mine, not quite though. And he's now what you demanded earlier. He has found the courage to walk out with his death knight and lich onto the map. Try to find anything he can. Meatwagon is only now coming to kill the siege engines. Or are they? We have in this MK again, and he is looking for the right position. <coughs> maybe even trying to kill off one of one or two of the meat wagons. No, he's going for the banshee rather. Banish and bolt. That's it. The BMB is the death of the banshee. Now he's going for the oh. meat wagon. And he has no more uh, zeppelin to save him. Another banshee dies. I think he forgot about the anti magic shot on that one. That's not good. And he also saves. Is that a real TP? Yes. Yeah. He also saves one tank. Also kind of important. A player's forces are under attack. Yumiko. He seems to be getting the grip on this game. TH can set up one more haunted gold mine, but he wants to go for ziggurats instead. More slow. More ziggurats. And uh, so many tanks, man. It's so tough. Yeah. But I think when all of these tanks attack everything at once and uh, the meat wagons can defend, maybe with anti magic shell, TH can hold. The thing is, though, he should be losing his haunted gold, uh, gold mine in any case, and after that, the U1 should just TP out. Oh, it's really tough to say. Yeah. Again, Invis Mountain King, Invis Blood Mage. Oh, by the way, nice moves here by TH. He's having a destroy at the uh, castle of Yumiko. And it's the third time or the second time that he cancelled the um, uh, healing of the staff with his silence. Oh, yeah, sorry, with the. That's really um, nice. What's the word? The dispel. Yeah, with the dispel. Or and devour magic, as it's called. Yeah. Yeah, that was really nicely done. On the other hand, he's now losing a destroyer. Oh, the this destroyer. Is too uh, good. Uh, it's kind of uh, sleepy by him, which is surprising because be. there's, there's not that much going on actually. Yeah. Well, he still has one destroyer, that's good. But he's losing stuff left, right and center. He was up to 75, uh, guys, he's now down to 55. With Yumiko playing kind of disgusting Warcraft, to be honest. Yeah, true that. Mm -mm. Paladin has been at this town hall for the last, I don't know, 20 minutes. Not done anything. Yeah, but he's almost level 2. There's only <laughs> one experience <laughs> point missing. And as soon as he gets le the level 2, he will be able to walk uh, off that ramp and maybe see a whole new world again. <laughs> be amazed yeah. by the marvels of the world. Yeah. The beauty of the water and the woods. TH is now attacking again. Tier 2. Will be a while though. NTH army has uh, shrunk significantly. Mm. Kind of sad to see. How many tanks do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 tanks. 10 and 11 are on the way. And I think I know what Yumiko's plan is. Just send them all in. One more fiend has sniped. TH is now um, taking at the necropolis. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think he um, he expects a way longer game now. Maybe trying to get um, some. Uh, I think some he just. Back. I think he just. Yeah, exactly. I think he wants slaughterhouses, statues, meat wagons. And yeah, maybe even abos. Or is abos T3? No. Oh, that's that's tier three. That's uh, too far away. A player's forces are under attack. His gold mine will have run out soon. So now he's going for the last gold mine and probably what's going to be his last stand. Tanks are coming. Almost 80 supply tanks for Yumiko. Making his way across invisibly once more. But there's a shade there, and he sees him coming. But there's also the flying machine reveal that shade. Oh man, that's really tense. Yeah. 
Is the H's army gonna be strong enough to fend off the 12 tanks? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Wait, wait a minute. A player's That's 6 right attack. there. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... Yep, 12 tanks is what's it gonna be. But Yumiko is uh, really patient as in the first match that we saw. He knows he can't rush anything because as soon as he loses those tanks the game is actually over. And now he seems fit to actually roll them out on the map once again, and this is the last and final death push we'll be uh, we'll be going to see. Oh, he cannot forget about these meat wagons. He absolutely cannot. And look at this nice funnel: the halls of the dead and the ziggurats. When you park your army behind that, oh it's really tough for the tanks to come in there. And I don't know why TH is running out here. He can defend so nicely back in that funnel, in that yep. new base he created. And the meat wagons can back themselves up into there. Okay, he wants to split up the army, and that's what he's getting. Oh, look at this! Thanks, nice they can't block. come through! They can't come through, how nice is this? Silence on the Blood Mage only. Oh, very well done by TH. He's not... As afraid as I would be. Oh, but there's more tanks coming. He split them up. There's more tanks already there. Four tanks attacking. Fifth tank. Sixth tank coming. And it's a lot of repair. That's expensive. But the meat wagons are there. They're dealing a lot of damage. Oh, but it's not. Oh my god. The damage. The this damage. Is so bad. What is this? This is so bad. He can't even take them down with the with the meat wagons with the orb. It's level 6 Lich now. This might be uh, actually good, but there's nothing left for, for TH space. Now the Avatar MK is coming in and he's he's dealing out the balls, he's dealing but out the, the battles. But there's on only three tanks. Only three tanks. He can focus. But he's also losing meat wings right now. Well, not yet, but soon. Uh, gets frost armored. Microed away. The bash and the, the Avatar just does not care. But the mean wagons. Oh my god, the Honda Goldman needs to be repaired. Only one tank left. Avatar can staff out, cannot be coin over as he's magic immune, of course. And oh my god, there's five more tanks over there. Why isn't he I finishing off the ziggurat? Yeah, oh, okay. And there's no more gold for Yumiko. No more gold for Yumiko. <laughs> oh man, this is so tense. And one building, one building only for TH. He's now creating another ziggurat and a crypt. He's creating a funnel again. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> what is this game? He has 47 gold and 47 supply. Uh, do you have Yumiko. the do you have the um, the uh, additional uh, program for Warcraft so that you can see the skill builds etc that Neo has? No. Okay. No. Because I would lo love to know whether the Lich went for the for his ultimate for death and decay, because if I uh, know correctly, it would work against the tanks, right? And this could be really yeah, it strong. Would. I'm pretty sure he he got it, but uh, you know, also attacking. Oh, two tank drop, two tank drop with the zeppelin. Very nice awareness by Yumi. He knows that there's this uh, reinforced choke. But there's tanks coming! And he's drawing the attention Both with ways. the militia. The tanks, the tanks, they're in the back. Acolytes are repairing. Tanks are changing their focus onto the uh, meat wings are changing their focus onto the meat onto the siege engines. Oh my god, it's so close! Oh, he needs to enough. get the one tank. It's not enough. Does he have enough gold? He has enough gold for another gold mine. But there's more tanks coming in with the Zeppelin! And he's the cargoing them over. Oh man, it's so many tanks right now. He's just clicking on the last remaining buildings. I think the crypt is the last one. It's the last one. The crypt is the last building. No, it's not. Just kidding. <laughs> it was a haunted gold mine. It just got built. Oh! The siege tank. The siege he tank finishes it off. It. But there's more coming in. There's more coming in. They only know one target. They find their target and he GG's. Before he just in the last second loses his last building. NTH with a valiant effort. Just barely not enough to hold on yeah. on last refuge what a great game oh. actually there was some slow times but really really nicely done the the ending was really intense it could have been an even better game with the longer uh, hold off by th but it was it was great um yumiko did what he had to do to win the game it was 47 minutes long but um in the end 12 tanks 
destroyed everything in TH space and um, yeah this is what you get when you lose all your buildings you lose the game let's see game two yep looking good excellent death road one of the new maps in Warcraft and especially in this tournament in WEC we saw this map making a big difference for example Nicker Oh man, now I need to... Yes, we cast the qualifiers, Neo and I. Mm -hmm. Nicker lost his last and final deciding map here on Death Road against Email, a Korean... I think he's normally undead, but in that matchup he played um, Orc. And what he did was, he got the four skeleton archers you can get, you can get on this map, then on tier 2 he got a Naga and he pushed the Night Elf to death with it. So getting those skeletons is really really important and giving them up to your opponent can be game losing. Mm -hmm. They are really so really that's... strong on this map, the, the skeleton archers. Um, yes. The first thing to note now that we loaded up the replay is um, TH decided to switch back to his standard human race which is something that we haven't seen in quite a while not not his human uh, race in general his human gameplay but rather playing a human mirror most of the times he plays night elf against human but for now he seems more confident in winning with uh, with the standard human pick and i'm um, really curious yeah, to see i mean this is this is his tournament life on the line he loses this map guys he's out there's this is the lower bracket right yeah, exactly. I think I think it is. This is the lower bracket. He's behind one to zero. He's backed up against the wall. This is what he needs to win. And he decides to go with his main main race, the human race. No night elf, no undead, not even orc. He's going humans. Yeah. So now we're ready to get back into the game. Um, re quickly setting up the. Score which should now be correct exactly uh, Yumiko is leading 1 to 0 in this um, in this loser bracket match and we are um, already at one minute we sped up to the game we paused it and I think we can start Remo um, yeah All right. let's go in uh, 3 2 1 go and of course as we said before Archmage first that's what we always see here. Mm -hmm. Now, we haven't seen TH in a long time playing this matchup. So I'm going to be interested to see what's he going to go for and are you willing to make a bet? Um, well, as I'm thinking TH is always trying um, different strategies. I think he might be going for, a, um, for an expansion and then going towards tier 3. That's my guess. I'm not. I don't know about expansion, but I'm also pretty damn sure he's gonna go tier three. I think if there is a human player that goes tier three, I think it's TH, and maybe Infi. And Yumiko is instantly going for this uh, skeletons, and so is TH. So they know the strength and uh, specialties of, of this map. Oh. Are under attack. And they're not gonna give the, op the opponent the uh, possibility of getting both of these. Focusing them really, really quickly. This is important so you have that addition to your army. There's the rune of rebirth, he needs to use it right now. And there, are, there they are, skeleton and burning archers on the one hand. On the other hand, oh, he's not even finishing the creep camp. This is interesting. Um, TH, on the other hand, he wants the XP and he is finishing off the, the warriors, which gives him level 2 and a couple of experience points even more. Yeah, and I think also the aura is pretty nice for the skeletons because they also require mana for their uh, searing arrows and cold arrows. Alright, and Yumiko is going on the aggressive right here. Oh, and one of the skeletons got ensnared. That's an easy opportunity to kill him. He's not trying to go for him though, rather focusing the archmage. This freaking uh, false troll trapper is so annoying and snaring all of his stuff. Gets another water elemental. <clears throat> Two and a half already. 
for TH, only one and a half for Yumiko. And it doesn't even get the footman, it's gonna be able to deny itself. That's by the way a bandit lord up here. Haven't seen that one in a long time. Are under <laughs> That's the one with the uh, uh, divine shield, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I always know that from the FFAs or f uh, four against yes, four exactly. ATs. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day when I uh, when I played that kind of stuff, I remember creeping that, and he instantly always popped his bubble. Yeah, uh, very very annoying. Th still tier one, one two three four five, six yeah s seven yeah. L seven lumber peasants is what I, I wanted, wanted what, to what say. What what does that mean? <laughs> Most of the times. Well, uh, <laughs> expanding. Oh, there's, there's a lot of militia running towards uh, already over there. All right. I didn't say he wasn't going to expand. I just said, uh, I don't know. And I think he's going to go tier 3. He's level 3 right now. He has a period of vitality. Very nice on the Archmage, I think. Yeah. Gained some tankability. And now he has a level advantage. And he's quicker. Uh, and he may have had an opportunity. Oh, he uses the, the town portal thingy, the way gate. Oh, to get to his shop. This is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> and goes to the mercenary. All right, TH uh, showing once more that he's creative. Oh, oh, and he's gonna be able to destroy this uh, this tower that is being built, yeah. most likely. And TH is really greedy. He's not going at getting a tower first. He's getting the town hall first. That is, oftentimes, a very costly decision. No, he needs and to be he, oh, he's going to lose one skeleton. Yeah. He's going to lose the first skeleton. Oh, he stabs himself back almost with this, the peasant that he was staffing to. Oh man, would that have been catastrophic? But he Please just go. barely yeah. gets back in time. And he should have enough here to defend. But he came late, dude. He came late and all of his peasants will be dead in a second. And now level 3 on Yumiko's arc. He killed so much stuff here. And TH, oh man, we oh see my god, around? The, the, the town hall is gonna get no, cancelled, oh my god, oh my god, that's catastrophic. It really is, the footmen are nicely, nicely microed, but uh, three are still hitting on the town hall and there's the cancel. Um, even the, the tower has to be cancelled and is being destroyed by two water elemental. This is looking really good for Yumiko, on the other hand, um, his expansion was delayed as well, but he's rebuilding three towers and they are almost finished. While on the other hand, he's still delaying the the expo as well as the towers of his opponent TH. I would love for him to send at least one of his footmen, TH, one of his footmen up there and just you know slay the peasants. They're all so low. Oh, I would, be, would would have been so easy. Just one footman up there. Didn't do it though, unfortunately. He just wanted to have everything back at his expansion to defend us. And he has no towers here. No towers for a long time and his Archmage is getting low and he has no boots of speed. Yumiko's Archmage does have boots of speed. And he loses more peasants. Calls more militia from his main base. Oh, but this is so costly for him and the Archmage needs to be careful. He's lucky, yes, that period of fatality. He stabs out right now towards the shop, maybe. Does he have a shop? He does have a shop, but it's all the way to the top left. He can't get there. Oh, he's and now we have to question just a little bit left. He's still there. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, all the peasants are dead again. Dead again. Oh my god. But now all the footmen, footmen are gone as well. So he might be able to finish off the water elemental and then surround the Archmage even. But no, with Boots of Speed this is really hard to do. And he needs those two militia to uh, to get back as uh, to peasant form to finish his town hall. This is what he's doing now. Maybe he can finish off the water elemental. Or is it timing out? This will be really close. No, there goes the water elemental. Experience <sighs> 40 H. But <laughs> there goes one peasant. And this is it. He's oh, he might lose that elemental. one to the water elemental. Oh my god, and there's another footman coming. Oh, you just have to feel for TH at this point. This is turning out to be like Take versus Porox. A million peasants have died this game, and now the Archmage is coming to arrest. But look at this. There's three arcane towers here. What does he want to accomplish? The, m the expansion for Yumiko is up and running. And he's TH is still losing peasants. Yep. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's looking really, really dire for TH. He, he was thinking of, uh, of nice strategies, but he isn't able to pull them through as he's not being able to um, finish his town hall. It's... <laughs> oh god. 
it's so close to being finished, but he can't be able to, he isn't able to, but now there are four more peasants coming, they're not even running in militia form, because he knows he needs to finish it, and he can't wait for the militia form to run out, but another one dies. This is close to the uh, Take vs. Podox game, we know. It's really bad, bad, but now it's finished, <laughs> finally, finally, <laughs> now he can get some gold and even build um, peasants from the town hall that he has finally finished. He stabs back in the meanwhile he kept, uh, he crept the mercenary camp of his opponent. Not one, what do you call him, uh, Shadow Priests. Yep. And he got also the one of mana stealing, which is nice for the MK versus MK. Possibly even now, if he has the absolute necessity to drain mana from the Archmage. Now, finally, TH's is expansion is running. But how long did this take? Our like four minutes of constantly losing peasants. It was so painful. And look at TH's lumber. He has 63 lumber. He is miles away from taking to tier 2 and Yumiko. He's more than 75% done with his tech. Once the Mountain King comes out and the sorceresses and the priests, I don't know how he's supposed to hold this. He even has 1000 gold disadvantage um, as if you compare the two gold mines. And this, this is really huge. Yumiko is really looking uh, in shape here. Almost yeah. finished in his tech, then he'll be able to add either uh, an MK or maybe even a panda to put uh, to pressure even more and even faster. Though TH now has a lot of footmen right here. That's two, four, six, eight. And by the way, at the uh, yeah, mercenary camp, those are not uh, shadow priests you get. Those are forest troll high priests. So uh, they have um, inner fire as well, I think. Ah, yeah, that's true. And they're also tankier, quite a bit tankier. They have 450 hit points. The Shadow Priests have only 200. So that's a nice little thing that also only TH does, getting those special priests. But he's gonna have to pull a lot out of his head to win this game. Oblivious he's getting a lumber mill right now, attack. probably just for the, for the lumber, because mm. he's so low on it. Do we see a tech? No tech yet. There, because he does oh, not have lumber. Instant tier three. Look yeah. at Yumiko. Yeah, he's yeah. already taking to tier three. Oh. Why not? He has all the time in the world. We have uh, two How workshop about I and a, a uh, an Iken Sanctum. It's looking good. Looking good. Lakshuka <laughs> Pukle. <laughs> and now he's uh, trying to keep THS, but he's forced back once more. As that one water elemental does a lot of damage to the tower. Does nice get though. destroyed though, with the help of abolish magic. And Yumiko is just trying to see where he can now do some more damage. See. Finally, the tech from TH, but he is further behind in his tier two tech than Yumiko is with his tier three. This is really really tough. Mountain King now second hero choice for Yumiko and a workshop double workshop. I think that's for mortar teams, right? Yeah. Uh, but I why? Why so do you need? Why do you need two the then, though? Are under attack. Mm. Well, maybe is that normal? I don't. No, I don't, I don't think, think so. It's normal. I don't think so. Um, maybe he wants to pressure um, pressure the buildings even more. Try to cancel the expansion to uh, with with many many mortar teams. Maybe cast them invisible even. I'm not sure. Maybe. Second barracks by Yumiko. So n for knights, knights probably. Yeah. And this now here the comes the fight. Mountain King, first time for him to enter the party. And there's a bolt around onto the Archmage, it's closed, but he staffs out. Thankfully he has that staff. But his army is a lot weaker it would seem. He loses his high beast, and I think that was an uh, important unit in this fight. He uses his one of mana stealing also on the Mountain King, so no more uh, thunder bolts for a while. Storm bolts, I mean. I'm sorry. A player's force yeah, there, by the way, there go the mortar teams. Two uh, mortar teams being produced at the <laughs> workshop at the workshops at Yumiko's expansion. And yeah, I think he, he really tries to go on the aggression. And why not? He does have a, uh, does have every advantage in his hand: the economic advantage, the tech advantage, he the experience advantage. He has double blacksmith, something I only know from StarCraft, double <laughs> yeah. upgrades, something you hardly ever see. So, double 
upgrades normally means you want to go for really strong timing when your upgrades are much more uh, developed than that of your opponent than those of your opponent and now TH is actually going on the offensive but I think this is just distraction tactics yep. Pella just you know get himself some time yep. Pella being maybe built scout out meantime there goes the balls but the, uh, the Archmage has the TP in a short while no he sh he gets the Potion of Invulnerability first, he wants to kill off as much as possible before TPing out, he wants to delay everything as often, uh, as long as possible, I'm sorry, and actually loses one more footman there, but I think he killed two peasants and a footman, right? Are under this is mm, close uh, to an even yeah. trade, um, and an even trade is good when you're behind, I think. But he did lose TP and Invulnerability, so yeah. that has to be added to the mix. But he did t t start attacking to tier 3 himself. Griffin Aviary is double. So this is the plan. Just uh, get uh, get some time on your side until you have Griffins out. And of course Griffins incredibly strong with their magic damage against footmen and knights. Yep. And this is the strong timing from Yumiko. This is what TH has to defend. Can he do it? He's trying to buy some more time. Needs to be careful. Militia support even coming in for Yumiko. Pulling them back now though. Oh, the Mountain King of TH needs to be so careful. Goes into the little uh, shrubbery <laughs> right there so he cannot be seen. Really this nice. is so t so sad to see uh, TH's uh, army with the four footmen against the knights and the the mortars yeah, and understand. the priests, etc. This, <laughs> this is so sad. And there you go. He goes for the town hall as I expected, or at least uh, with the first shot. Now bolt on the uh, on the first mortar and is being killed off. There is no healing from the paladin. He was too far off. Maybe he can even get uh, another priest. No, he doesn't. Now there's a clarity potion oh. on the archmage. Yeah, there's dragonhawks. Dragonhawks right now because he didn't have tier 3 yet for the uh, Griffins. Mountain King. Uh, Mountain King. So be careful, has one more bolt. Use it on a mortar team, I think that's the right decision. Has killed off all the mortar teams right now, I think. Nope! Holy Light keeps the last one alive. And the Archmage holding on. Dear life, but now he has four Dragonhawk Riders. And all, he, all Ayumi has against it is Water Elementals. Which are of course strong, but they are not as easily uh, as quickly produced. And now look at this nice positioning from up here on the high ground, yep. where you can basically not be attacked. And this is why people call him the best player because he comes up with this stuff on the fly, thinking of things that other people would never think of. Now there goes uh, another focus, there goes the bolt on the uh, TH's Mountain King and he's being focused, not even surrounded. There goes the last hit by Mountain King and he goes down and uh, in the meanwhile he's not, uh, TH is not being able to focus the mortar team. It's nicely micro, it has a scroll of protection, is now healed and now TH's Archmage has to be really careful. Moving around the corner on the upper choke and now he gets back into the uh, to the safe, but on the other hand, uh, Yumiko still has the advantage of the mortar team. Now he can safely go into the base, and with shrapnel, he's even focusing all the peasants. Look at that! Look at that damage! Look at that AOE damage! Yeah. No, nope, now the shrapnels are strong, but now two griffins. Now the tides may start to turn. Possibly, they are really strong. Three griffins against mortar teams. They are so strong. Look at that damage. He loses one Griffin, killed three mortar teams though I think, and now onto the t onto the knights we go, and the dragon hawks are dealing with the priest. Look at this nice micro, and now the TH has finally become strong again. He's coming out with militia, sensing his possibility to fight back. Thunderclap we saw right there by Yumiko. Oh man, this is so good by TH, but he can't kill off the knights as they are so incredibly fast. Oh man. This is just this is just beautiful to see. I think. Yeah. Th did really well in delaying um, the the first push of Yumiko. If that would have come earlier, that uh, would have looked really grim for Th. But he was able to delay it, and thus was able to produce um, uh, air units, which are really nice counter against all the uh, ground units by uh, of Yumiko. And now he's able to um, get himself back up to 60 supply only with um, with air units, two griffins, I think there are even more added, there's the third one. Do we see any upgrades? No, not 
uh, not so far, but he is back into the game. And here comes the counter to the Griffins, and those are the flying machines, but only five out right now. And when they're out of position, they can be killed off very easily. But TH, he ran out of his towers. I think he would be safer there. He has no Paladin yet. Paladin is only now being constructed. Oh, and his army, I think, is a lot smaller. He's fighting here, though. Maybe he should retreat back into his towers. Two water elementals for Yumiko, only one for TH. And he seems to be missing out on a lot of DPS. Oh, he lost two Griffins. Maybe even three. Yes, there's a third one gone. And that was costly, and also all of his Dragonhawk Riders. Oh, and Yumiko, his force seems strong, his force seems big. He may have a shot at closing this out here. The Griffins were the brief blind counter to the opponent army. But now that there's flying machines in the air, everything has become quite a bit more difficult. Look at that damage. That now the Griffins are already gone. The Gyrocopters, or the flying machines, are finishing off the two. Uh, Griffins, and this is it. There is the Paladin level one. There is no uh, bubble, and he there is the GG by TH. He was not able to get back into the game. It looked uh, good for just a second, but Yumiko fought himself back and uh, was able to take his advantage from the earlier minutes till the last second. And GG's out. Um, TH GG's out and finishes the game. So this is a 2 4 0 clean victory by Yumiko against the TH. So argu arguably one of the best Warcraft players out in two matches. This is really, really significant. <laughs> yeah. Was surprising, was a big upset to a lot of people. And I think it was such a beautiful hold by TH, but then there was even more work to come, and he was kind of caught out of position in the middle of the map. And he lost too much. Maybe he should have defended in, uh, in between his towers. But yeah, Yumiko played well. And uh, after an amazing early game for him, was able to close it out and kick TH out of the tournament in the lower bracket with a 2-0 clean sweep. And he will advance.